there is an issue that I'd like to address for some time now. Um, I was just sort of uh, thinking about the various aspects around it. The issue is uh, patriarchy and how that arguably affects men. Um, so often we hear, especially from feminists, about how we live in a patriarchy and it's oppressive towards women. Um, but there's a few points that need to be considered. Firstly, to what extent is patriarchy a valid term about the present situation? In Western countries, I'm not talking about... There's obvious parts of the world where there's very clear discrimination against women. It's indisputable. Um, but in Western countries where there's been a history of strong feminist movements, um, and uh, there's been a history of that, um, the context, I think, is a little bit more hard to really define. Um, in terms of men having the upper hand of getting paid more on average than women, um, and so on, it arguably still as a patriarchy, also having most of the top jobs. Although I'm not so sure that uh, I would go along to say it's it's completely a case that men have uh, all the best positions and women don't. I think that's completely misleading. Um, and certainly in terms of opinion, in terms of voting rights, all that sort of thing is pretty much equal. Um, and there's many areas that men could argue they are hard done by. For example, I've mentioned the uh, father's rights issues a few times. Anyway, I, I don't want to get into all of that specifically because um, I want to address some points in this video. Um, you may know that I've made a number of videos that are critical of aspects of feminism. Um, I'm not anti-feminist because I think that's misleading. I think feminism is far too broad a spectrum to be anti-feminism. Um, for example, I wouldn't call myself anti-socialist, although there's areas of socialism I don't like, areas that I do like. It's the same with feminism. I'm not anti-feminist because I don't disagree with all aspects of feminism. There's parts of the world um, where it's absolutely needed. I mean, today, William Hague and Angelina Jolie chaired a summit on sexual violence and war. That's a very important issue, and it's one that's entirely valid. Um, to get to the point, um, my, the title of this video is just uh, Patriarchy Hurt Men. Now, there's been obviously something of a backlash against feminism in the West, and I think that is understandable because a lot of men, and women for that matter, are fed up with radical feminists vilifying men. Um, and the problem is the radical elements of feminism have been a lot more outspoken in some ways than the more moderate feminists. So they've been allowed, to, the extremists within the movement have been allowed to take the platform, so to speak. Um, there, there's so many issues that could be brought in here that I simply don't have time for in the bandwidth for this video, but there is a few points I'd like to address. Number one, um, men... I think it is wrong when some guys will blame feminism for all the problems they face in life or all the, the problems that men face. I think that's wrong. Um, feminism is certainly guilty of hypocrisy and it is guilty of, I mean some aspects of feminism, is guilty of hypocrisy and is guilty of stirring up misandry, i.e. basically hatred of men and boys, as subtle as that may be. But there's a lot of areas whereby the pressures that men face, you, you can't blame on feminism. If anything, it is traditional patriarchy that is more, much more responsible for that. And arguably, I, I have heard moderate feminists saying that men shouldn't oppose feminism because it helps them as well. Um, and you would never hear a radical feminist say that because radical feminists just hate men. That's just <laughs> the way they think. But moderate feminists will always argue, well, uh, feminism benefits everyone. Um, I can see where they're coming from because what they are saying is that traditional patriarchy shackled men with responsibilities that um, were put on them because of their gender. Um, I think that to give some examples, look behind me. You might see this World War One poster, Royal Air Force. So I'll put that into view. 
It's a it's a copy of a recruitment poster in World War One. I. I got it free in a newspaper, and basically it's just um, encouraging young men to join the air force. Now I've mentioned World War One. How I believe feminists are completely wrong to talk about male privilege, and I completely stand by that. I think they are wrong to talk about male privilege in history when it comes to things like that. By the same token, though, I believe I also said in that video that. Um, it's wrong then for male men's rights activists to blame feminism for that. Um, feminists are wrong to say it's male privilege, but <clears throat> it's not the fault of feminists. Um, that was a patriarchal situation. You can't deny that. I mean, women didn't have the votes at that point. It was it was a patriarchy. There's no other way to look at it. Um, but it was a patriarchy that hurt men. Um, there's so many areas whereby men have a unique responsibility that women have never been uniquely forced to face. Um, the obvious one, the one that comes most to my mind, is financial responsibility. Now, part of the push of feminism is for equal job opportunities, uh, equal pay and so on. But women, I don't believe, have never had the same weight on their shoulders in terms of having to support a family. I know there's issues with single mothers, and I I am not trivialising the sort of pressures they face, but I'm talking about um, in a traditional sense of uh, family, and I want to be careful the way I say that because people might misinterpret it in the wrong way. And um, this is nothing against gay people or anything like that, so don't interpret it that way. But I'm talking about um, when you have a situation, and it still exists in many parts of the world. Um, I would argue most of the world, in fact. Consider this. A uh, young man who's unemployed, has no regular source of income, or at least has very little income, let's say does a part-time work. Um, what chance in hell has he got of finding happiness with uh, a woman he can marry? The reality is, he doesn't, because most women will look at him and think, this is a man who can't give me financial stability. Now that's not to say that most women are gold diggers and just demand men give them lots of money. I don't think that's the case. But when men look for a partner, it's absolutely not the case that they look for a woman who's financially strong. Almost no man looks for that. Now you could argue that men are shallow in another way that where they look, may look for looks and beauty. That's true. And that may be a burden that women face more than men. There's a saying that uh, ugly men can get a woman if they're rich, uh, but a good-looking woman um, or uh, a woman who's not attractive, she she's in a really tough position, and I think that's a fair point. But what I'm trying to say is, um, when it comes to financial burden, I think men definitely have much more pressure. And I just want to be clear about this: I'm not saying that women don't face financial burdens. I'm not saying that for a second. I mean, unemployment's hard on anyone, but I do think there's more of a stigma against men for it. I, I honestly believe that. I think there's much more of a stigma against a poor man than a poor woman because the poor man um, is seen as a deadbeat, he's seen as lazy, he's seen as being in that way because, um, oh well, why does he not have a wife, why does he not have a partner? He's saying, I know this because of a person to come across it. Um, like I say, you know, we, being under financial pressure isn't easy for anyone, but I do not believe that there is the same expectation of women to support a family. I really don't think there is. Now, before that's misinterpreted, obviously women have pressure in other ways, and I'm not taking anything away from that. Please don't think I am. But in terms of fin finances, I think there is more pressure on men to be seen to be strong family men who are keeping it together. because. As soon as a man falls on hard times, now if he's lucky and he has a loving, supportive wife, she will stand by him at hard times. But sadly, there are women out there who will abandon their men as soon as things get tough. I think that's despicable, but that's the way it is. Um, there may be examples of men as well who do that, and certainly there's examples of men who don't take the responsibilities. But the point I'm making here is when it comes to financial burden, I do, I honestly believe there is a unique pressure on men. Because like I say, a young man, or well, any man for that matter, who is seen to be um, not doing well financially, and I'm not talking about like, um, you know, I'm not saying that there's an expectation for them to be rich, but any guy who is not, for example, in a stable job will be stigmatised. 
Now, it could be argued that anyone who's unemployed is stigmatised, but I think it's, in many ways, it's especially hard on men, because men are traditionally expected to be the breadwinners. And where does this traditional attitude come from? It comes from patriarchy. So if a man is seen to be um, not providing for his wife or girlfriend, then he's a deadbeat, he's a loser, and that's how he's stigmatised. And it is patriarchy, not feminism, that has done that. Um, another area I want to look a little bit at is the pressure on men in terms of being open about their emotions. Now obviously this is a cultural thing as well because different cultures look at this in different ways. But all over the world I think it's fair to say that men have always been expected to be strong, to get through it, to not show their emotions. Um, so they have to bottle it up and sometimes that's expressed in the wrong way and then they have to deal with anger issues because they've bottled it up and they haven't been able to because of the expectation that real men don't show their emotions then they don't now to feminism's credit the more moderate side of feminism has always sort of said that um, there's nothing wrong with men showing their emotions and there's many decent women out there who have no problem with it however there are also a lot of women who um, if a man is seen to be emotional, if he's seen to be sentimental, and actually this is particularly prevalent in the Eastern world, in countries like China and Japan, if men are emotional, women dismiss them as weak. And the irony about that is those societies are more patriarchal than Western societies. So in that sense, there's a lot of... You know, we hear about um, women getting unfair treatment often, and although it has improved a lot in China, but... We hear about women not getting fair treatment there, but actually there's also huge pressure on men, which isn't always spoken about. I mean, the pressure on a young Chinese man to do well is just phenomenal. Um, the same with young Japanese men. Uh, so it, it's definitely it's definitely uh, unfortunate, and I think it's... You see, uh, I've, I've come across... I've been in... Um, situations where I've discussed this with female friends and they've said things like oh there's nothing wrong with showing emotions but then you have to deal with it afterwards and sort of a case of well you could show your emotions once but after that you basically just have to to be a man and deal with it and um, the problem is some things in life you can't just get over like that um, so that's the cultural mentality these are these are Asian women that I've spoken to about this I think, um, therefore, that you need to sort of look at why, wh where all this pressure comes from. I, I get as pissed off as the next man about radical feminism and how it slurs and attacks men all the time. Um, and I also think that um, some feminists are also guilty of, if a man, for example, loses his temper, they will always... If a man and a woman have a debate, or an ar let's say a man and a woman have a heated argument, feminists will always portray it as, oh, he's, he's talking down to her, or he's arguing with her because she's a woman, rather than being, oh, well, maybe he doesn't like being spoken like that way to anyone, by anyone, and maybe he would be arguing exactly the same way to a man. So I think they have uh, distorted that. Um... So clearly there's a lot of things to explore with this. Um, apologies I haven't structured it very well. I'm just throwing thoughts out there. But there's a few sort of uh, conclusions I'd like to make. Number one, um, when men complain about feminism, and I believe a lot of the complaints are valid, I've certainly done my share of it, we also need to remember that not all the problems that men face, not all the pressures that men face, not all the expectations that men face um, in fact probably most of them you cannot blame it on feminism um, there's certainly unfairness that men face which is a slightly different issue um, and that is partly the result of feminism because feminists have actually openly not only ignored men's rights but openly went out of the way to oppose them I'm talking about issues like father's rights and so on um, access to children that sort of thing but in terms of the the weight that's put on men's shoulders in terms of responsibility, I don't think you can really blame feminism for that. That is much more related to patriarchal notions. I mean, when I mentioned in the video about the White, white Feather campaign, there were feminists doing it, but there was also a lot of feminists at that time who were actually defending men, 
What I mean by that was they saw their brothers and fathers coming back, shell-shocked, horribly scarred. Um, those were women who had compassion and they didn't want to see, they were actually defending men at that time. And it is important to understand that in World War I, the feminist movement was deeply divided. That is very important to understand. Um, so I, I just want to make it clear that when I talk about feminism, I'm talking about specific types of feminism. I, I don't believe this this movement, this ideology, whatever you want to call it, can just be typecast in one way. Um, and I don't want to be too pedantic about words, but I do think it's important to recognise that not all feminists are exactly the same. Not all feminists have exactly the same mentality. As guys, we need to realise that. Well, male feminists as well. Um, I'm not a male feminist, but I'm not anti-feminism. I'm not particularly pro-feminism. I, I support the feminism that I think is... I think there's parts of the world where it's absolutely needed. But to get back to my original point, patriarchy isn't really a good thing for anyone. Um, now, there's a difference here with a guy who chooses to be a more, a more traditional sort of guy. For example, he doesn't mind spending money on his wife and his girlfriend. He doesn't mind doing chivalrous things, etc. None of those things I have a problem with, because I think the same way myself. And as a man, I, I do have something of an alpha mindset, i.e. I am protective of my girl. You know, I would... I am the sort of guy to be... to have that sort of mindset. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but... all I'm saying is that... patriarchy... you know, if you're looking at what is... if you're looking at an alternative to feminism, then patriarchy is absolutely not the answer. Um, because that would just be going back and it wouldn't be helping either gender. It really, really wouldn't. So, feminism, for all its faults, is not responsible for all the pressures men face, and I think we need to acknowledge that.